Welcome everybody to today's meeting of Governance and Audit, both those that are participating and those who are watching from home. If you have any technical difficulties during the meeting, then please contact Democratic Services Officer on call who will attempt to assist you. Today's officer on call is Nick Hughes, it's changed, and the number to call is 577208. I would ask participants, when you are not speaking, please mute your microphone. This minimises background noise and will help everybody in listening to the proceedings. Microphones must only be on if the participant has been granted permission to speak. To gain my permission to speak, please very briefly indicate in the chat to the right side of the screen, and I will then make a note and go back to you once the person speaking is finished. In, on the meeting environment to help, would everyone present please ensure their mobile phones are turned to silent and they're not used to make or receive phone calls whilst the meeting is in progress. Please also refrain from checking emails or conducting other business and ensure that you're in a quiet room free from distractions for the duration of the meeting. Please note this meeting is being live streamed for members of the public. The meeting will also be recorded and will be subsequently broadcast on the internet. I'll now do a roll for the attendance. Please can I ask members of the committee to confirm they're present in the meeting when I read out their name. I will ask for the attendance of those councillors who are participating in order to speak under Council Procedure Rule 20.1 separately. Councillor Campbell. Councillor Campbell. Councillor Dexter. Councillor Boyd. Good afternoon, Chair. I've got apologies for Councillor Braidwood. Councillor Crittenden. Present, Chair. Councillor Curry. Here, Chair. Councillor Cook. Here, Chair. Councillor Garner. I'm here, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Patmore. Here, Chair. Councillor Shrub. Here, Chair. Councillor Towning. I'm here. So, Councillor Campbell and Councillor Dexter are not here? Can, uh, Ca Councillor Dexter's on holiday. Right. I'll leave those two off. I haven't received any requests for 20.1 speaking. Are there any members who would like to speak under 20.1? That's no. Are there any declarations of interest from anybody here? No. I would now uh, like to ask you to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 22nd of July, 2020. Copy it attached to the agenda pack. Please can I have a proposer and a seconder? I'll propose, Councillor. It's a proposal in a seconder. Uh, no, no objections. I'll take these minutes as approved. That's approved. We now move on to the quarterly risk management report. Uh, I'll call upon Chris Blundell to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Chair. This is the standard quarterly risk review report that's presented to the committee. Um, committee members will note at section 4.2 where the main key corporate risks are identified that there are, the five key risks are the same and the score is the same and no change from the last report that was presented. Um, there has been um, some change, obviously the underlying circumstances behind some of the risks, so I'll just give a brief um, overview of some of the risks where there has been some change. So firstly in terms of East Kent housing performance stroke transition, um, members will be aware that on the 1st of October, a new uh, in-house 
housing service will go live at the council and therefore um, some of the risks that were inherent and related to actual performance of East Kent housing will no longer cease to exist. However, there will be um, a period of transition as the new service beds in and we'd expect um, that risk still to be reported to the committee over the next uh, 12, uh, 12 months or so as the service is established. Um, limited resources. Um, members also be aware of the report that was approved by council earlier this month, where we identified three million pounds worth of reserves in order to address the funding shortfall uh, for the current 2020 21 financial year. Over and above that, looking at the medium term financial plan, there's obviously pressure on next year's financial um, uh, position and the budget for 21 22 and onwards. We'll be looking to address that. There's also, this is compounded by not just the uncertainty around COVID, but um, national political uncertainty, Brexit, um, and all the uh, implications that that may or may not have for our financial position. Um, in terms of Brexit itself, um, this obviously is still a risk for the authority, but with the transition period um, finishing, uh, or coming to an end in the early new uh, early part of the next year this risk will obviously therefore at that point cease to become a risk and will actually just be an issue so there will be issues that the council will need to address um, but it won't be a risk anymore because it will be a uh, an issue that will have uh, materialized or not um, finally in terms of coronavirus um, i think it's it's um, quite timely in terms of the uh, announcements that were made yesterday in terms of the changes to restrictions that are going to be in place that um, demonstrates the nature of this risk that we're dealing with quite usually usually with the risk there is a um, an incident that occurs and then we put measures in place to control or mitigate the impact of this with coronavirus we're almost constantly having to re review and reset this risk because it is such a changing and developing picture um, and there are plans in place to deal with not just the outbreak itself, but also the recovery from that in terms of um, in terms of ensuring both the economy and local community can operate in the way that the council would wish it to. Um, happy to answer any questions on the report that committee members may have. Do any members have any questions? Oh, Mike. Oh, no question please yeah all right thanks yeah thanks for that chris um there's one one item i'd like to ask about um under political stewardship which is uh 16. i mean this i mean i understand we obviously um at no vote or control on the council so um would but is that the only reason that that's at such a high high risk I, I know you you mentioned that there remain ongoing issues that could have a significant effect on the council um are they related to that no overall control uh, and if not what are they that you're highlighting there thank you council garner if um if you don't mind I'll, I'll defer this to to mr willis as um deputy chief executive he'll, he'll be better placed to answer that question than mine I was hoping, Chris, you were going to say uh, to Estelle Culligan, but uh, I'll, I'll have a go at answering. Um, I think the, the wording, because this one is the owner of this risk, is Tim Howes, the monitoring officer, um, quite rightly, who's, who's, who would know the most about political stewardship. Um, but I believe the, the sentence that Councillor Garner refers to, um, there remain ongoing issues which could have a significant effect on the council, relates to wider governance issues, not just the fact of no overall control. I think there are many councils that operate very effectively with no overall control for many years. So that in itself is not a reason for having a score of 16. And the score of 16, of course, reflects that it's near certain to happen four out of four, and the impact would be substantial to the council if it were to manifest as an issue. Okay. Okay. Just one follow-up yeah. on that. If you, if 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 it was just relating to the no overall control, and as you say, the um, a lot of councils work very effectively with no overall control. What sort of score would that 
would that um, give? So I'm just trying to gauge the um, what the impact of these other issues are having on the the score that would be given there. Chair, if you are okay with me answering, um, I am. Yes, it's a non-answer, I'm afraid, Councillor Garner. I I couldn't possibly guess what component of the score would relate to one aspect of political stewardship over another aspect of political stewardship. I know that's not terribly helpful and uh, Tim Howes is on leave this week so he's not been able to make this meeting but perhaps he could provide a, a fuller answer to you subsequent to this meeting in writing. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Councillor Towning would like to speak. Thank, thank you, Simon. Um, regarding uh, East Kent housing, uh, obviously you say there's uh, an exposure there for the council. Surely you've actually uh, assessed that exposure by now uh, and sort of um, circled it and uh, sort of set it to one side with regards to our funding for the future or not? I can have a go at this one, Chair, as well. Please do. Um, Yes, I'm, I'm the director responsible for housing, so um, the service that's receiving East Kent housing when it comes back to council control on the 1st of October. And yes, indeed, we are very aware of the risks associated with um, bringing East Kent housing in-house. And, and this, as, as Chris Blundell highlighted on his introduction, reflects the period of transition rather than once it's back under the council's control and the risks will change somewhat. I think... Um, the, the high risk associated with this particular um, transition was because there, it, we, we didn't know what we didn't know because the, the housing stock was being managed by East Kent Housing. We were paying them to do it for us. And so once we discovered and have discovered a number of um, failings, some of which were directly related to the reason that we're bringing it back in-house, we were aware of a huge amount of work that needed to take place in order to mitigate those risks. And they didn't just include those that we all know about now around health and safety issues um, in relation to um, the, the homes of, people, of our tenants, but also related to weaknesses in the financial affairs of East Kent Housing and the information technology, information communications technology systems. Um, and we've, so what we've been doing is working very intensively across the whole partnership with Dover and, and Canterbury and uh, Folkestone too, in order to make sure that we have as smooth a transition as possible to the 1st of October. And that's involved a lot of money, as well as a lot of people being involved in making that happen. And we're in dialogue also with the regulator, the housing regulator, because they have, they're cited on these problems from when it was run by East Kent, East Kent Housing. And we have a, a plan with them to deliver that goes beyond the 1st of October. So we're very acutely aware of the risks and been very much, the work that we've been doing is very much directly related to mitigating those risks. And as Chris highlighted, once we've got control of the management of the stock, the risks become slightly different in that then it's a question of, no doubt there's gonna be much higher expectations as soon as the council has control of the stock to start improving the quality of the service. And so we're very mindful of that. And we're in dialogue with tenants and leaseholder representatives to make sure that that's, that's carried out as smooth as possible. And we're resourcing the new team as best we can, given that there was a large number of vacancies within East Kent Housing, resourcing the team with new appointments so that we're best equipped to try and manage that new service when it comes back in house. Can I just ask one, one more question, please? Uh, obviously taking, uh, the, uh, taking East Kent Housing back in house, is there any possibility of clawing back some of that money that has been abused or paid out without work being done? And is, is, is there any possibility of that? Um, I suppose we paid a management fee to East Kent Housing for the delivery of the management and maintenance of our housing stock. And the reason why we're not going to do that anymore is because we weren't happy with the sort of service that we were getting from East Kent Housing. That was fundamentally the reason why Cabinet agreed to bring it back in-house. Um, but the answer to your question, Councillor Towning, is no, um, because we, are, we reckon at the end of East Kent Housing's life, which is now pretty close, it won't have, it will, it will, it won't have more than two apenings to rub together in the bank. 
they've, they've, it's almost completely exhausted. Indeed, one of the risks we've been managing is to make sure East Kent Housing doesn't trade whilst insolvent because it's a company. And the, the board of East Kent Housing, who are responsible legally for this, are the chief executives of the relevant um, di districts. So our chief executive is on the board of East Kent Housing and the board is responsible for making sure that the entity, the company, isn't trading whilst insolvent. So we've been very mindful to make sure that we didn't screw every penny out of East Kent Housing and force it into insolvency because then that would have damaged the services to the tenants and leaseholders um, at a time when we wanted a, a more um, managed transition back to the council. Thank you. Right. Okay. Would anybody else have any, would like to speak on this item? I don't have anybody up. Right. Recommendations to, to approve the review of corporate risks. Please can I have a proposer and a seconder? Propose. I'll second it for you. Thank you. As there are no objections, I'll take these as approved. Thank you. We now move on to quarterly internal audit update. I'll call on Simon Webb to introduce the report, please. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members. This is our regular quarterly internal audit update report, summarising the work of the East Kent Audit Partnership on your behalf in the last quarter. On page 27 of the report, there is a table summarising the uh, three audits which have been finalised during this period. You will see that we concluded reasonable assurance in the areas of member code of conduct and standards of arrangements and also payroll. We were only able to conclude no assurance in the area of benefits in kind, which is largely administered on your behalf by the East Kent um, HR partnership. The reasons for that are detailed in the bullet points um, on page 30. There is also a management response there from East Kent HR. I am pleased to report that there are a lot of easy wins there to get that up to reasonable assurance, and I would expect that uh, once we've undertaken the follow-up review in that area, those recommendations will have been implemented and we will be able to conclude at least reasonable assurance. Follow-up is a very important part of internal audit work. During the period under review, we've undertaken two follow-up reviews and they are detailed on page 31 of the um, agenda pack. One was on uh, PSM compliance and the other was the very important area of tenant health and safety. In this instance, it was lifts. Now, that was um, an area of considerable concern previously and formed part of the referral to the regu housing regulator. It was no assurance. Um, I'm pleased to report that it has been increased to reasonable assurance. And there is some detail at 3.3 in terms of the progress that has been made. Obviously, tenant. Uh, Thanet has more high-rise blocks than some of your neighbours in East Kent and therefore um, a positive move of assurance as regards lifts is an important move forward. Um, on page 32 at point 4.1 we detail the work in progress which is currently underway and um, that gives a list of some of the audits that you can expect to see coming forward to this committee in subsequent meetings. Um, on page 34 onwards, um, there is a table showing the progress against the agreed 2021 plan. Um, obviously, we had a bit of a hiatus um, in April, May and June um, at the start of the COVID um, pandemic. Um, I reported to the last meeting that we were making good progress um, in terms of the delivery of the plan and that does continue. And we already have a couple of a couple more audits finalised, which we can bring forward to the November meeting of this committee. Um, page 36 shows um, progress against the East Kent housing plan as well. 
which obviously will be uh, brought into the FANIT plan from the 1st of October. Uh, page 36 and turn the page onto 37 also shows the plan for East Kent Services, Civica and East Kent HR. Um, so it shows uh, the time that we've spent thus far against the various reviews. On page 42 of the report, uh, there is a table showing those areas where we concluded either limited or no assurance previously um, and where we are with the follow ups. It's really just to bring uh, to keep that on the radar um, to make sure that we bring those forward to you at subsequent meetings. Um, one of the most important on there you'll see is fire safety, um, East Kent Housing, Tenant Health and Safety. Uh, that is a work in progress, um, but it is um, approaching draft report stage and that will be reported to the next meeting of this committee in November. Um, that is the final area of tenant health and safety that we still need to follow up. Um, and uh, yeah, good progress is being made on that follow up and that will be reported at the next meeting. Finally, pages 43 and 44 show a balanced scorecard of performance indicators for the East Kent Audit Partnership uh, itself. It shows progress against the plan, productivity, um, as well as cost per audit day, etc. That's it from me, Chair, but obviously happy to take questions on any of the items on the agenda. Right. Well, it, it appears we, we don't have uh, anybody at the moment in the chat box requesting to speak. Um, I believe we have Sarah Einmonger here, do we? Is she online with us? Yes, I am. Oh. You are. Oh, uh, would you be happy to just update us on Grant Thornton's position um, with regard to the, the letter we received from East Kent partnership member um, of the, the sort of grave concerns going forwards yeah. as we tend to spend a lot of time looking at retrospective matters. Um, I'm, I'm keen not, not to get tripped up in the future. Um, yes, thank you, and, and apologies for uh, for joining a little bit late there to this evening. Um, so, in terms of and the reason that we don't have a written paper to update you is that we really are very much at the early stages of our audit. Um, the financial statements audit um, we received the accounts at the end of all, or the beginning of this month, and the team are working with. Tim, Chris, and the wider finance team. The element that you're referring to in Christine's letter is something that we're looking at as part of our value for money work. Um, and so we are, uh, we're at a very early stage with that. Um, there are a number of issues that we just want to work through and understand uh, the position. So we're not, we have at this point, we do not have anything to update to members. Um, and whilst I can appreciate that being a little frustrating, you can also um, appreciate that you would want us to have done um, our proper audit work before reaching a conclusion as well. Um, so it's certainly something that is in, in progress, but not, not, uh, not complete. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any, anybody else have a question or is on this item, on the previous item. Uh, um, Councillor Mike Garner. Thank you. Yeah, um, I wanted, could you, do you have any idea sort of how long it's going to be before you're going to be able to report back to us on, on those issues? Mm -hmm. um, so, the the current work program that we're working with um, with 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 um, Tim and Chris is for us to be able to give an opinion by the end of uh, October, uh, November. Sorry, so this will be a work going on over October and November. Um, we we would we'd hope to be able to give our opinion on the financial statements for that stage. The value for money, um, I believe there's there's some objections that are still in progress from last year um, that are drawing drawing to a conclusion. I spoke to my colleague who's dealing with those um, earlier today. Um, so I think we're we're thinking towards the end of November that we'd be able to report back to you, but it will depend on the extent of um, extent of what we need to do. 
Thank you. It would, it would be helpful if that came in for our November meeting as well. <laughs> I mean, I think that's that's our aim. Um, yeah. Yeah. It will depend on the complexity of uh, of what our work uh, involves. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I believe I need a proposer and a seconder for item five. I'll propose Cedric. Thank you, Cedric. I, I'll second it, Councillor Shrub. Right. I don't hear any objections, so uh, I'll take these as approved. Thank you very much. That concludes uh, the business for tonight's meeting. I declare this meeting closed. Thanks for everybody for participating and uh, for those watching from home. The live stream for this meeting will end now, and thank you all. Good night. Thank you.